If you're gonna clap, give me a clap. Give me a real clap. There we go. How about that? Yeah. Clap them cheeks. Thank on. you. <laughs> Hey, uh, thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, here we are at the end of day one of night aerial target engagement with Green Line Tactical and Airborne Tactical Training Solutions. Getting ready to roll into day two tomorrow, but before we do that, before we break for the night, uh, we thought that we'd take this opportunity to sit down and, and kind of have a little fireside chat about night vision. Uh, I'm gonna ask you guys some questions on the chance that we've got people out in the audience that, uh, that maybe have not gotten into night vision at all um, and maybe don't know what they don't know. We do also have some students from this weekend's class with us. And once I've gotten through kind of some basic primer questions, we'll open up the floor to them. So before we get started, uh, I'm gonna have you guys each kind of give me a little intro and give, give everybody sort of a rundown of what your background is, how you came into night vision, what your night vision experience is, et cetera. Uh, Sam, I'll start with you. Yep, uh, my name is Sam Houston. Um, I've worked for Dawn since uh, about late 2015. So we're, we're we're, we're about to kiss a decade together. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we don't know if he'll make it, but um, either way, I'll be um, here. But uh, anyway, yeah, so uh, I was in the military. I did a lot of stuff with night vision in the Navy, a lot of thermal stuff as well, also some UAV stuff. Um, pretty, pretty heavy background in aviation, so this class is kind of applicable and everything like that. I owned and operated a, a night vision hog hunting outfitting service. Um, and I also used to work at Tactical Night Vision Company. Worked there for about six or seven years doing uh, like the build and repair program mm -hmm. and then some special projects uh, along the way. And <clears throat> all the while doing, you know, uh, the kind of the tactical training with, with Don and, and another company. So, you know, Greenline Tactical has a, um, we do it all. We're, we're full spectrum for sure, but we have a heavy emphasis on the night vision stuff. Um, and I've been... I've been right in the thick of it with Don doing the night vision from pretty much day one when we started doing it. So, um, and we're, we're, we're continuing that. Awesome. Cool. <clears throat> Don Edwards, uh, owner, operator, Green Line Tactical, uh, former Army Ranger, SF dude. So um, my background over the years using, using the stuff from back when it was PBS 5s, PBS 7s, before we had lasers for the mm -hmm. rifles. So I've had sort of a front row seat as a participant in the evolution to get us where we are now. Um, then was a part owner in another company that specialized in training night vision stuff. Um, so it's, I've been in the tactical night vision game as far as like curriculum development and training and or sales for about 15 years now, maybe uh, a little bit more. Um, I'd have to look at, look at a calendar or something to figure that out. But, um, I was the director of law enforcement um, and government sales at TNVC for a while, uh, director of training there, stood that up. So not just a military dude who's used the stuff that I was issued, but pretty heavily involved in the, the night vision industry as a part of the firearms industry as well. And uh, you know, Green Line Tactical has been a full-time thing for about five years now. And, and yeah, really the night vision because of you know, mine and Sam's you know, pretty heavy background in, in that on the industry side and then our other instructor Eric you know, same thing we've got a lot of guys that you know we all kind of came up in the night vision world on the commercial side and as users either military law enforcement or uh, you know um, at, you know Sam's got a tech, very technical background when it comes to to night vision and sensors and stuff like that so it's really kind of cool to you know we love this stuff it's it's something we like to do so that's you know we just don't do it because you know used to wear it to go fight people you know we, we like the new technology and because of that we get a chance to you know discuss this with you know companies that are you know make, making new things and consulting now and then and things of that nature too so you know we're more than just guys that teach our our carving course at night All right so let's let's start at the beginning then uh again super the way back we get oh gettysburg like, well okay not your <laughs> beginning ahead, i don't think we have enough time tonight to cover that uh but it, at least some some again very basic foundational right. night vision stuff right um there's this sort of I, I i kind of feel like there's an inverse rule here uh that the more tubes that you have on your head the cooler you are well, uh you know but let's but you know let's do, do, do you have to have do you have to have all the tubes let's talk singles duels you know, Panos, Fusion, let's just first talk about kind of what is out there. Yeah. Um, 
And I would say anybody that says you don't need all the tubes is just because they don't have all the all tubes. The tubes. You yeah. Know? Um, but uh, but yeah, um, like I said, you know, I was using the PBS sevens, and, and I know mm -hmm. you used them. Yep. And uh, you know, I don't care for them. I understand what they were trying to do, but I also know they were cutting corners. Um, PBS fives briefly before we, um, I started getting those, we used those on, on motorcycles and whatnot. Um, then the evolution to the PBS 14, which actually turned out to be a better idea than fake duels, because that's all PBS sevens are is, is a, a monocular with mirrors, which is worse than just having one eye mm -hmm. and uh, whatnot. So um, they were trying to get infantrymen to think they had the same stuff <clears throat> that the pilots had, but you know, it didn't. We, yeah. you know, we were dumb enough to believe him at first. Yeah, so um, actually, you, I, you know, this is my, you and I having a difference in experience here. So I, I did I did use sevens for a little while, and then um, my experience, we went straight from sevens to fourteens. I never had the PBS five. So what? Yeah. Where does that well, fall? The five was the old square. It was predates. Oh, okay. Yep. The seven. Like, okay. Uh, like uh, what was it? Clear and present danger. When they're sneaking into uh, Harrison Ford's house and it's all dark. Those were PBS fives. Yeah, it's like a box yeah. with. Oh, uh, Silence of the Lambs. Those are PBS fives. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. So we we still had some of those when I was in the Ranger Battalion, no and kidding. they they were actually better for doing certain things because they were they're, actual. They're tool, they were actual dual, dual too. Yeah. Um, so like the guys that did the motorcycles and stuff like that on airfield seizures had had those okay. instead of sevens. Right. Um, but. Uh, but we, we had night vision back then, but we didn't have any lasers for the guns. So it was really only for walking around with. And, and the head mounting solution systems were... Yeah, the old skull they crusher mounts. Yeah, you wore it yeah. under your helmet. Yeah. yeah. Or a lanyard around your neck yeah. and you just... Nobody okay, ever wore it on their face yeah. because it hurt. Yeah. yeah. But... So, okay, so we went, so, so we went from 14s. Yeah, so 14s started getting fielded kind of like a early mid 90s and you know they they were a pretty good evolutionary leap from the seven even mm -hmm. though they were a monocular and you know i still even to this day like i'm not going to bag on a 14 uh, and especially guys who get them and they train on them and they put the time and the effort into learning the you know how to how to look at things and and um interact with their world because your your spatial awareness change your depth perception changes it's not that you don't have depth perception just so that it changes and you have to relearn it so if you have the time energy inclination you can do a lot of shit with a 14 you can do more shit with a 14 with a whole lot of training and time under it than some you know somebody who buys you know a set of panos and only breaks them out once a year to watch the fireworks on fourth of july it's just yeah. go figure you you it's like, use your it's like buying a Glock 19 and shooting the shit out of it versus buying that staccato or Atlas pistol that you, you never, you know, train with or, or practice with. So it's the same adage. Okay. And then we went to the sort of the, the modern era of duels and then... Mm -hmm. So now let, So now we're kind of in Do you want to talk fusion. about the evolution of duels and how they came up? Yeah, please. Okay. Well, so yeah. Uh, and the GWAT was, was definitely instrumental in that. And, you know... They realized pretty quickly the um, the spatial awareness. Two game, eyes are better than two one. eyes yeah. are better than one, and really at the time, and I was I guess I was spoiled, lucky, whatever, what have you. But I was in aviation, so I you know I pretty much cut my teeth on Anvis sixes and nines. So I started out with duels, whereas you had to yeah you know suck it up with sevens and fourteens for a yeah. while. Um, but the 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 ground guys, the the soft dudes, were like, hey, we want what the aviators want because you know for the same they, reasons for the exactly same, yeah. same reasons. Um, and the ANVIS systems were were great inside a sterile cockpit environment, but you get them on the ground and they they're they're fragile. They're, they're right. uh -huh. Um So you went from you know ANVIS sixes and nines for that matter to the PVS twenty three, which is a little bit of an upgrade, but still not great. And it wasn't until the PVS fifteen came out, um, kind of like eh, it was about two thousand two two thousand three. The fifteen kind of mm -hmm. debuted. Um, and that was the first dual tube system that was really designed for ground use. You know, ruggedized, weatherized. Um, it, it didn't have the coatings on the lenses that the, the Anvis systems had, so you could see more wavelengths of light. They were, they were optimized for, you know, soft dudes going around and, and doing bad things to bad people. Well, Which, and that's, you know, let me jump in yeah. there on that, because he brought something up about the coatings on the, on the Anvis on the aviation side. And... Uh, 
there's a misconception that if you have aviation lenses or aviation glass, you have better quality. Yeah. And that's not true at all. Well, not for ground stuff, not, for sure. It's, they're, they're optimized for what a pilot needs. So it filters out certain colors so that it doesn't, they can still see their instrument panels better and stuff like that. And we've had guys show up with those to do stuff on the range and there's certain things they can't see. There's certain lights and colors that you're like, you can't see that? I'm like, no. I'm like, oh, you got Anvis 9s on. You know, you got aviation coatings yeah. on there. So they're, you know, they're designed to filter that stuff out for the pilot. Yeah. So because it's aviation grade doesn't mean it's better. It just means it's optimized for what a pilot needs Perfect. versus what a dude who's on the ground needs. And, uh, you know, nobody realized that. They were just getting, you know, the, the aviation goggles when they were, they were getting hand-me-downs. You know, every time they had to get replaced, guys were, you know, modifying their helmets to, to take that stuff. And then, yeah, the 15 was really the, the first one that was designed specifically for that. Yep. And the lenses on the 15s were actually really good. Uh, so if you have a little set of 15s, like, cool. Like, they're a little bulky and heavy, and they don't get great battery life. But as far as, like, clarity, image quality, they're, they're great. They're still, yeah. even in 2024, they're, they're still pretty good. Yeah. So, and then obviously the 15 was, was then supplanted by the well-known PVS 31 and 31 alpha system. And that's what, you know, that's what everybody is, is, you know, jonesing for these days or goggles like it. Yeah. Um, and it, the, the, if you really think about it, um, the PVS 31, it's an old system. Like it right. debuted about... 14 years ago at this point like it's it's old news it's there's you know i mean they're still great goggles they're still great goggles. way ahead of their time um they're lightweight um there are uh, quite a bit of accessories that interface with them um they they have a sacrificial window in there for um you know to to protect the the actual lens and everything like that but it does have a lot of there's a lot of I don't know, limitations or, or Just downfalls. the proprietary nature of them and, yeah. and stuff like that. And know. the lack of durability. So, yeah. um, you know, so the, the, the cool thing is like, so the military through the global war on terror, you know, the, the, the money that was spent to, to, you know, up our capabilities, that was great. And that, that fueled a lot of the development. Um, I don't know, how many years ago do you, would you say that the commercial market really kicked off? I mean, uh, had, probably right before COVID, so like 2018, yeah. We 2019. had dual tubes. We had the Sentinels were some of the first real commercial yeah, ones. Sentinels. Those were like 2013 um, is when yeah. the Sentinel came yeah. out. Uh, Sentinels and like then a, a ruggedized you know, we had um, canvas. the uh, B and VD from, uh, yep. um, and then, you know, different companies were coming out with, but it wasn't as mainstream. Right. And then, but now we have, I mean, especially with 3D printing, people, guys can rapid prototype stuff. And yep. there's so many different guys that are into it that we're coming out with all kinds of different types of goggles. And people are learning, figuring out, okay, how do I make a better mousetrap? Well, and that's, that's one of the things that I, I, I wanted this discussion to lead into is you know, now it's not just a matter of dual tubes, quote unquote. I mean, there's the, you know, there's the, the military systems, the PBSs. Um, you know, and I, I remember, I remember when the Sentinels came out, mm -hmm. you know, and now there's BNVDs and DTMVS and, uh, RNVG, ARNVG, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, where, where do you, where do you just, just narrowing down to dual tube systems? Yeah. I mean, where do you start? What separates them? What's yep. worth talking about? So dual tubes basically break down into two different classes or categories. You have fixed bridge. Uh, non-articulating systems like the Sentinel, the Mod 3, the RNVG, um, the RNVG, RNVG yeah. um, the, 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 there's like the low-light innovations, Aeternus, um, there's a, uh, the, the Artemis. Yeah. Those, those are, they're essentially up-armored ANVIS systems. They are ruggedized aviation, they don't necessarily fixed have bridge. aviation lenses in them, but they are, they're kind of a, a evolution from fixed bridge aviation systems like ANVIS. And they're still out there. They're hell. I'm going to be wearing a set tomorrow night on the bird. Um, I my first dual tube was a Sentinel, um, and it's they're still same. Yeah, they're they're keep it simple, stupid, but they're really durable. So if you are kind of a mongo and you go crashing into stuff from time to time, and uh, you know uh, they might still be yeah, what if you're you prone to probably, breaking your stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a uh, good rugged fixed yeah. bridge type might be the right answer. Yeah. And uh, then. 
On the other side of the coin, you have articulating systems. Articulating systems uh, are generally more expensive. They have more doodads and bells and whistles and stuff like that. They, they articulate out and you can flip them up and they you know, stow to the, the helmet a little bit better. And they're, and I've come kind of full circle. I remember we were real big into durable fixed mm -hmm. bridge systems. We ran Sentinels for a long, long, long time. And again, they're great, uh, but I got a DTMV G and I started running it, and I was like, okay. Um, and I could, you know, our buddy John Dufresne was was a earlier adopter of articulating systems, and he started talking about the strengths and and you know when you start talking about like getting in and out of vehicles, shoot house stuff, uh, needing to flip one up to utilize say like a thermal monocular in conjunction with it. Um, and any number of other scenarios you can think of, that's where you start to see the value in the articulating goggles. Um, and now there are articulating goggles that are actually really freaking durable. Yeah, I mean, they um, proved themselves. We, yes. were, we were skeptical at first about like, are these gonna be rugged enough? Be, well, be, it was because I was seeing a lot of 31s break. Yeah. And because that was really the only thing that there was 14 years ago. Yeah, it was really all we had to compare yeah. it to. So. The, the DTMEG was really kind of the first one we're like, okay, cool, these are, these are rugged. Yeah. You know, they're, they're tough. Don, we were using them. Don fell down a, uh, an embankment in South Carolina or Georgia. Georgia, yeah. And uh, I mean, just, you, you ate shit. Oh yeah. I mean, you, oh, yeah. boom. Scuffed my rifle and, uh, up and everything. You know, we all run over to him and the first thing you said was, how are my, yeah, how are my nods? Like, screw I like, me, look, I don't care about yeah, me, look, how are my nods? I have a broken. Fine bone or whatever that'll right. heal but those are expensive <laughs> and i was like oh they're yeah. pretty rugged they skipped that, across the, it was in the dude hit the, the ground like a sack of potatoes oh yeah dude yeah that hurt um, um yeah and those were dtmgs dtmgs yeah, yeah. Um, and uh yeah they were fine they had some scuff marks on them but you know no big deal They're, nothing was broken you know so you know that's one of the things we have been fortunate over the years. We at this point, I haven't used all of the new stuff. There was a point where I could say, "Yeah, I've used everything that's in production," but now there's, every time um, you turn around, there's some new 3D printed housing or some, you know, possibly even like a Chinese knockoff yeah. um, Argus um, system. Or, yep. or and I, I'm not going to dog those systems. They 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 do actually work pretty. Like you have a set of 13, 1431s, yeah. um, and they they work. Um, you know, you're you're stealing IP, I guess, but um, they're they're out there. They're yeah. they're not bad. Yeah. Well, and that goes back to your point about 3D printing and rapid prototyping, yeah. and, and you know, now it's like there's all there's all these kind of new. I don't want to say the word proprietary per se, but but proprietary or, or more individualized or niche you know, housing types and systems. And yeah, like and that. it's just like guys yeah. are you know, the consumer market is really really into it. They have there's so much stuff available to the regular guy now. Yeah. That uh, um, it used to be, you know, L3 or ITT, they made it. Um, Steiner or L3 made the laser. Yep. And if Carson you don't like lenses, it, suck you know, it, right? Yeah. That yeah. was it. it. Because the manufacturers were making this stuff and designing it for the military contracts. And you, if you just be happy we let you buy this stuff. The and commercial market. They weren't. They didn't care about the commercial market. Yeah, well, I was just going to say the commercial market is basically an afterthought. Right. Because know, right. they didn't have the and buying it wasn't, power. And it wasn't that, that big. It wasn't. It wasn't that big because what night vision cost. Before, you know, it was. It was kind of. It was. It was a big financial thing. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't as available. So there weren't as many people that were into it or wanted it and stuff like that. And now it's. It's. You know, I dare say it's probably. The, the fastest growing segment of like the, the tactical shooting, mm -hmm. you know, oh, yeah. like market and community. You had, you know, it's not the biggest because it's, it's still the most cost prohibitive, but it's, I mean, so many guys are getting into it. Yeah. And um, the reason, such a rate. the reason it, well, there's, there's, there's probably three reasons. Um, the global war on terror, uh, it's kind of like the AR-15 guys get out of Vietnam. They're like, well, I had my, my M16 in Vietnam. I want to buy an M M4, AR-15, whatever. Guys are, are getting out of the military who served in the GWAT. Uh, and they're like, well, I had night vision when I was in the Marine Corps or the Army or whatever. I'm going to buy night vision. So, you know, you got vets and there, there's a lot of them. Uh, additionally, you got, you know, you know law-abiding citizens who are like, well, shit, if the military has that shit, I should have access to that te technology and, and everything like that. And, and hell yes. Um, and, you know, people, they've got a little bit more, you know, 
other than the economy right now, um, you know, people have had some disposable income. And it's like, when you look in your gun safe and you're like, oh, I got like 17 AR-15s and like, you know, 13 Glocks or, or whatever. It's like, well, now what? Now what? what now? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. this, this One new of the whiz to bang gun is not going to be. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's that is a big, big thing. Yeah. Plus the hunting, uh, you know, hog hunting, coyote hunting is, is super popular. Guys want it for that, and it works really well for that. Um, and there's all kinds of other shit you can do with night vision. So Plus, guys it's are, just fun. Yeah, you guys you know, are a lot of our to do shit in the dark. St right. Students and alumni, that's just their thing. You know, they don't own bass boats, stuff like that. Some of them have all of it. But, Man, but a know. bass boat fucking balls out, blacked out at 50 miles an hour across a fucking lake in the middle of the night, that'd be fun as shit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, you know, that's, that's, you know, it's a hobby too. Right. You know, it doesn't have to, you know, people are like, well, what's the justification? I don't need a justification. It's fun. America. It's fun to go out. America. America. Right. It's, right. it's yeah. fun to go out and shoot my guns with my buddies in night vision. And, yep. stuff like and that. not why, get a Why do I need any other yeah. reason than that? Um, yeah. You know. Ranges are typically less crowded at night. Yes. You know. Yes. And, and you don't get sunburnt. Yep. You know. Because I like to walk my dog in the dark. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Right. Whatever. Um, but uh, yeah. So a lot of guys, it's just it's a hobby. It's fun. You know, they're into that kind of thing. Yeah, they don't golf. They don't fish or whatever. Yeah. You know, that's their thing. Yeah. Oh, I'm, but I'm fishing, down. fishing and nods is fucking cool. Yeah. So we had this kind of mass proliferation of of you know dual tube type systems on the on the commercial side, and then I guess the, the next sort of branch off the tree, at least on the military side, is, uh, you know, would be Pete Cool Guy, which is, you know, either Panos or Fusion. Um, so, or both. Or both. Or both, right. Yeah, right. Or both. Uh, and then the integration of, you know, other stuff on top of that, uh, layering capabilities into yeah. night vision. Uh, can you guys talk a little bit to that and, and kind yeah. of well, where I mean, we, where we the, are on that side? The, the, the Pano thing, you know, I'm going to give, you know, almost all the, all the credit um, to our old boss at Vic, TVC, Vic yeah. Kosla. He's got, they have a really, really strong relationship with L3, and he's the one that convinced them to make that, you know, regularly available. Yeah, they, they, guys were getting They have it. a storied history, not just L3, other companies like, hey, build, build that for civilians or, or unrestrict that for civilians, and we'll stroke you a check for however much it yeah, costs. Yeah, we promise that you will sell yeah. a lot of it. And, and, and they put their know, money where their mouth is. It started is. with 31s. Mm -hmm. and no, then, then, it started no. with lasers. Well, I'm talking about on, oh, sure. you know, on this, but yeah, it goes way back to the, the civilian power laser, mm -hmm. um, class one lasers. Um, but uh, but with, the, with the night vision and, and L3, it was, you know, he, the 31s, and then that, was the, that opened the door for, for you know, 18s. GPMG yeah. 18s. Um, and uh, so, you know, yeah, so I'd say, what do you, you call it, peak cool guy? Yeah. Is your Panos with the E Cody on it. So you got, you know, clip on thermal um, integrated into your, your panoramic vision. Um, it's probably peak cool guy. And, yeah. and Ryan, who, who's running around here, has exactly that setup. Two. Times two, right? Um, yeah. So. Yeah, they. It, uh, it still doesn't make him cool. Just an anecdotal story, you know. They were not, TNVC was not super, super sure they were going to sell a ton of panos. Man, as soon as they unrestricted those, they sold, they sold like 40 or 50 right off the rip. I mean, just boom, shut up and take my money. And they were pretty surprised. They were like, okay. So, uh, and they're, they're kind of like, if we look back on some of the night vision classes that we, we did, um, probably starting out, I think we did our first class, what, 2017 together? And it was, you had like maybe two dudes out of 20 with dual tubes. Yeah. Uh, most people were running 14s, 14s back, back yeah. then. Yeah. Now I would say you got two dudes out of 20 running 14s and, and probably a couple. And, and two dudes out of the 20 running panos, and the vast majority have dual tubes. Mm -hmm. So as time goes on, you may see, a, a, you know, almost no 14s and maybe even more panos and um or at least more fusion here and there or, or whatever so yeah, yeah. Well, i guess the i guess the next question there for, on the topic of kind of the evolution of the the, the systems is uh what i mean what's next like you said we have panos with fusion and sure. i know that there's some you know some systems and ability to overlay things like you know direction of travel and waypoints and things like that I, has the technology reached you know, it's apex or where, I mean, where is there left to go? With I don't know. Every time we say, 
we're probably about peaked out. Somebody, somebody. Well, it, it here's what I'll tell you, and this just this just happened like an hour ago. This is I'll bring it up. Uh, our buddy Josh over at TNVC, he's still a builder. I trained him. Good dude. Still works there. He, every once in a while, he'll text me. He's like, "Hey man, you should see some of the tubes that are coming in these days. Like they got one today that was forty. Like the the signal to noise ratio was forty six point eight. And if you don't know, if you do know, you're like, holy shit, forty six point eight. Um, if you've been to Night Fighter, you right. know what we're um, talking about. Forty six point eight is why haven't you breathtakingly high SNRs like that's. That's like JSOC spec. I mean, it, I mean, maybe not anymore, but you yeah, know, I would have so I would have committed more crimes to get a forty-six point eight SNR tube. You know, it's ten years ago. Not, you know, there's better stuff mm -hmm. if it's you know showing up there. Uh, yeah, so the way they make it hasn't changed. They've just gotten better and better, like ARs. Right. Yeah. I mean, the current ARs are basically the same gun that Eugene Stoner in, invented. But we know more about them. We can make them better, you know. Like cars, same thing. Right. So internal combustion engines are the same, but they're not. Just kind of in that continual yeah. revise and right. refine. So making it yeah. better. Um, I still th think that eventually digital is going to someday. Resurface. I'm glad. You, I'm glad you brought that up because again, talking about the commercial market, there's been kind of a surge in in the presence of digital in the last couple of years. Yeah, what we've what we've been seeing lately is more <coughs> their camera, their low light cameras. Yeah. Mm -hmm. CMOS sensors just they don't have what you actually need to actually, you know, move, shoot, and communicate. Right now in 2024, that could change. It, yeah. it, it will. It someday it will change. Yeah. But you know, I, for me, thinking back when I took my first night vision class, Don, this was God, 15 years ago. Don said, oh, in 10 years, digital will completely supplant, replace analog. Yeah, well, I should forward, totally believe that. Yeah. And I said it for 10 years. Yeah. And I'm like... 2020 came around and, uh, and we were, that didn't happen. And it didn't look like it was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And even in 2024, it's like, no, we're not there yet. We're not, not going to be there but, tomorrow. And, and, the, and you know, the, the reason many of us believe that was because that's what, um, that's what big military was asking for. Right. So usually when they start saying this is what we want the next step to be the industry figures out how to make that happen because they want that money right? right um but it just never happened and i you know the military shifted its its tune a little bit to like we like fusion you know if you're never going to give us digital fusion is a good idea you know and the yeah. tube quality kept getting better and better the thermal stuff kept getting smaller and smaller mm -hmm. so you could you know you had these small clip-on thermal imagers and stuff like that the e -Cody, and, and stuff like that. So it's gone that way for now. But I still think that everything's getting smaller and better. Quietly in the background, there are companies that are still trying to perfect CMOS sensors. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and here's what's going to happen. People are like, oh, when digital comes out, it'll be cheap. No, when digital comes out to the point where it's usable for you know military applications, It'll be a restricted technology, just like night vision. Just like was. night vision used to be, and it'll yep. be super expensive, just like night vision was, and it'll be, you know, a decade or more until it becomes unrestricted and you can get it. And even when you can, it'll be it'll be you know very very expensive. But that's just the way of the world, unfortunately. Yep. I also have feel like I've been in that loop for. You know, people saying, oh, in five years, digital is going to eclipse analog. And I feel like I've heard it every five years for yeah. the last, like, 15. Yeah, we've been saying yeah. that for 15 years. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I still think that that is, you know, where we're going. And, and it's mostly because that's what, you know, there are people trying to do it. And, mm -hmm. you know, they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. Yeah. So, you made a comment a little bit ago about... Uh, the racist one or the... the no. We'll talk about that one later. Okay, cool. Um, no, no, you're talking about signal noise ratio, right? And and about how the the the, the technology is at its foundation the same, just like with the AR-15, but that it just keeps the quality just keeps going up and up and up. So when when you're talking about kind of assessing the quality of a tube, you know, I know that there's uh, there's kind of a laundry list of specifications, but like, what are some of the if you give me like what are the top three things that you would look at on a spec sheet? when you're assessing a tube? SNR, EBI, and probably 
Oh, I want to say halo value, maybe, or luminance gain. Okay. You know. Can you talk through kind of what some of those, what do all those mean in terms of like what I'm seeing when sure. I look through the tube? So signal noise ratio is basically a, the um, tube's ability to build an image at, as the light level drops. So tubes with higher SNRs uh, will build a better image um, or at least the image will look better to the end user um, as the light level drops, as opposed to tubes with lower SNRs. The darker it gets, you know, it starts to, there's a phenomenon called scintillation, that fuzzy white TV screen effect, and eventually it just gets really, really bad and then really, really dark, and you, you don't see anything. Tubes with higher SNRs, you'll maintain that performance, you know, far longer as the light level drops. So SNR is, is important for image quality. Um, and I, I would say it's probably the king daddy, that and, I mean, yeah, probably the king daddy of, of tube specs. Uh, EBI can be very important depending on what you're doing um, and your environment that you're in. And that's like um, EBI's equivalent background uh, illumination. And it's, it's the lowest light level at which the tube can uh, produce an image. And so, and it's affected by, by temperature. So if you have a tube with a low EBI, which is what you're looking for, the lower the better with EBI, um, as it gets hotter or whatever, um, some tubes with higher EBIs that get kind of fuzzy and the, the detail, like, you know, seeing like the contrast between my shirt and my pants um, gets, gets harder and it kind of gets fuzzy and it, it looks like you've got like mist or dew on your lens or something like mm -hmm. that. So it gets kind of fuzzy. Um, so depending on what you're doing, again, in the environment you're in, it's, I think it's pretty important. Um, <clears throat> if you live in a, a cold environment, you can get away with higher EBIs than guys who live you know, down south where it gets hot in the summer. So um, there's that. Halo value is when you look at a light source, is, is it, you know, it blooms up, and halos can manifest themselves in a couple of different like, ways. They can be very, very tight and bright. They can be, you know, large and bloomed up, but kind of opaque, so you could sort of see through them. Um, and, and a couple of other kind of like oddity looking weird phenomena can happen. And depending on the environment you're working in, if you're working in a high light environment, urban, um, with a lot of ambient light, yeah, halo value can be important. If you live out in the wilds of, you know, Montana, where there is no ambient light other than stars and, and uh, the moon, it's probably not Something, something I've really, yeah. yeah. Um, and then luminance gain, how, like, tube brightness. Um, you know, uh, older tubes have, typically, sometimes they have lower luminance gain, so they're just not as bright. And it, it's basically voltage applied to the tube um, is how it breaks down. So some of the new tubes, um, the, the L3 super gains, they're, they're not any better than the standard unfilmed tubes, but they do have higher luminance gain. So to you, the end user, it's, it's going to brighter. appear as a brighter image, which, and it, and it is, it's, it's not like it's not, it's not like it's false advertising, um, but um, depending on the environment you're in, it may be worth the cost, it may not be, but it's still something to, to consider. So that's, those, those are the, the important ones. And the, like there's photocathode sensitivity and everything like that, but if you've got a really good SNR, your photo, it's just gonna work itself out and the photocathode sensitivity is gonna be good. So I'm like, nah, yeah. SNR is where I'm looking at. Yeah. It's gonna, I'm going That's to That's the one that impresses us the yes. most. Okay, see. yeah. Which there's, is there's also line pair resolution, but that really starts, I only care about that. I wouldn't say I only care about that, but I really care more about that when we're talking to like a magnified, like clip-on night vision devices where we're using magnification to zoom in. Um, if yeah. we're using headborne stuff. Or you head, can use it for some sort of stuff. photography or yeah. something like yeah. that where you want a cleaner picture. Yeah. It might be zooming in on the image or something like that. But you know, the old, the old saying, if the minimum wasn't good enough, it wouldn't be the minimum, That's is right. true. 64 line pair is, is the, like, the minimum standard. And the human eye can't really, you know, Younger eyes can probably see the difference. You and I aren't going to hardly tell right. the difference between the 72 and the 64. Because you're And old. then there's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right? Has but, been. Yeah. I do sign the Dinosaurs. front of this check. <sighs> yeah, but you got to use readers to do it. That's okay. Um. So the, 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 one, the one metric that, that 
hasn't come up, which is interesting to me because it's the one I hear kind of parroted all you the time. You're about to say it. Yeah, yeah. Gonna say I, it. I can't not say it. I'll take FOM for 5,000, Alex. Yeah, please. So FOM is not, it's not a data point per se. It is signal noise ratio multiplied by line pair resolution. Um, and we just said line pair resolution isn't that big of a deal. Right. right. So FOM was established by the U.S. State Department to classify night vision like as like performance levels for night vision. However, if you know about the tube specs like we've been talking about, you know one of those num numbers, one of those numerators in that equation is, is potentially worthless. Okay. Um, and so going off of just FOM alone, you know, you could be getting a high FOM tube, but it could have really high line pair resolution and not so great SNR, but because they're multiplied together, it works itself out to be at least impressive on paper until you break it down. So me personally, especially with a head mounted system, I'm going to look for that, that high SNR tube with the lower line pair resolution. Mm -hmm. That's... <clears throat> It's going to be a better performer was, in the dark. I was able to sort of handpick the tubes that are in the goggles that I use the most. They're the pair super gain, and I had the opportunity to have 81 line pair um, tubes. Right. But they were a much lower signal to noise ratio than the ones that I went with, which were in the that are in the mid 40s okay. signal to noise. So I was like, they're 72, which is still, you know, and to me that's that's pretty high. It would have been really neat to have an 81, but I, I would rather have the higher signal to noise um, to give me that, you know, better performance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, we kind of spent a lot of time on, on you know, night vision kind itself. Of nerdy stuff. Nerdy yeah, stuff, right. Yeah. Tubes and, and technical specs, and you kind of even the history of the evolution of various platforms. I, I, I'd like to talk for a little bit about night vision as a system. Mm -hmm. It is because it's one thing to go out and buy a PBS fourteen or go out and buy, you know, a, a whatever flavor of dual tube system you want. But as we know, and as you guys, your your crusade to educate the consumers is that that by itself isn't it only gets you so much, right? So there's there's other components that that go into it, and I, I kind of want to go over some of that. Uh, I, let's start with let's start with helmets. Right, not just the helmet itself, but well, can I please? say one more thing about tube specs, just to help people understand? Tube specs are like uh, like accuracy on a barrel. Okay. Like this barrel is a one MOA barrel. This barrel is a quarter minute barrel. This barrel is a, a three MOA barrel. It's like oh, you got a really accurate barrel, but bro, you're you're a six MOA shooter. So, like if you don't train and you don't learn about this stuff. You, it doesn't matter if you have super high spec stuff. If you can't walk a straight line without tripping over your freaking self and falling into a ditch, um, you're, you're a liability, not an asset, and that's right. putting it lightly. And so, at some point, you st you're, you're chasing your tail. Yeah, don't chase the farm dragon. Don't, right. you know, if it means like get a good, you know, get a good quality for what you're spending. Because yeah. I also understand you're spending a lot of money. So getting you want to make sure you're getting good the right best now you can. is better than something great two years from now yeah. and waiting. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So but yeah, dudes can get paralysis. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. Trying to figure out what should I get? Is this you know, dude? Just the, the old just analysis. Any, paralysis. Just about yeah. yeah. I mean, almost all of the stuff that's coming out right now, even that would be considered mid tier to a lot of people is way, way better than what we had just five years ago. Yeah. So, you know, and we got dudes still rocking tubes they've had for five, six years, no big deal. We got dudes rock, rocking tubes that are 15, yeah. sometimes 20 years old that they train on them and they can do shit yeah. with them. So, um, so yeah, that, that does get a lot of people to get sucked into that, you know. But I also understand, you're spending a lot of money, you wanna make sure you're getting the best thing you can for what the amount of money you're spending. and. You know, but at some at some point, it's like, just get it. Yeah, and let's go. Let's go train. Well, and to your point, some there is at, at there is a point at which, you know, gr great is the enemy of good enough. Hundred mm -hmm. percent. Yeah. All right, helmets. Yes, ahead. please. Yeah, no, that's fine. Helmets. So, so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, you know, in, in terms of cost versus you know measuring out for purchases, and I, I want to talk a little bit about that more in a, in a minute. But yeah, let's talk about, okay, so let's look at night vision as a system. Sure. Right. So 
from your guys' standpoint, sort of what are the, what are the components of a, of, a, of a complete system and what do you need? There are four things that you need. You need the NOD, the night vision optical observation device, um, <clears throat> and that's, that's square one. And then you need a way to put it on your head so a helmet and a mount. The mount interfaces the head, the, the helmet, sorry, to the night vision device. So then your hand's free. But then you need some type of targeting device. And you know you can get a, a night vision compatible optic, but typically it's an IR laser right. as, as your primary you know targeting sighting system. So helmet, nod, mount, laser. You got that. You got a you got a holistic system, an organic system that you can actually start going out and doing stuff with. Yeah, there's a million other accessories that you can, you know, mm -hmm. add to and accrue, you know, accessorize with and um, increase your capability. But you, you you cover down on those four things, you got something. Yeah, um, one, one of the things that guys they still ask a lot is, do I really need a helmet? I mean, like I'm not in the military, I don't do this, I don't do that. You know, couldn't I use, you know, something else to to mount it to my head? And the answer is, yeah, you can. And there are some pretty good solutions for that. But the helmet is still like our best choice because it's rigid yeah. and it's going to stay put on your head. Some of the uh, the, the the skull, you know, the, the head borne, I don't know, you know what they call them, but like skull you know, the mount, cry night cap, the skull tight mount, mount yeah. and stuff like that. They're great and they're comfortable, but if you're doing much more than what we're doing right here right now, it's going to wobble around and it's hard to you know keep keep steady. If that's if you're not doing anything real strenuous, then that's great. But as soon as you start doing very much shoot move communicate type stuff you want a rigid helmet you don't need ballistic you and there's know, so guys you don't if you don't need a ballistic helmet don't buy a ballistic helmet well and there's there's other applications in, in times scenarios events where having some type of head protection is a good thing yeah. like i have used my helmets for all kinds of shit i have climbed up and trimmed trees you know with them i've gone horseback riding through you know the rocky mountains i've gone whitewater rafting mm -hmm. skydiving so there, there are an ATV riding. So there are other applications for a helmet besides just night vision usage. And then to kind of talk, you know, as far as bump ballistic. Well, if you're the type of dude that you're like, ah, I, I like to go to like classes and, and like training is my thing. If you foresee yourself uh, going to maybe a, a shoot house class, like a live fire shoot house class, well, ballistic helmet's going to be required, yeah. uh, or at least any good. Um, quality right. vetted training is going to be live fire yeah, live gonna, fire you know. you're going to need plates and a, and a you know a ballistic helmet so maybe you should just go ahead and just buy once cry once kind of thing so it's something to think about mm -hmm. um and helmets man they are they're kind of like ars they're super modular there's a million things you could put on them to accessorize them and customize them um and they're you know and you do get what you pay for yes yeah. you know if you're going to wear this thing all night long the cheapest helmet may not be the, the most comfortable thing. You know, you, you may like hate wearing that crap, right? So that your end user experience, as we, we say, may not be that great. You got a crappy chin strap and the suspension system sucks because you saved a little bit of money. And it's like, and you're, you're just like, man, this helmet sucks. It hurts my head. You know, it won't stay put. I can't get it adjusted. There's, you know, so. And there's things you can do if yeah, you've you got, let's say you've got an uncomfortable helmet, yeah. like a 4D tactical pad system is a really solid, not super expensive upgrade that'll probably Probably one of the best things you can problem. do to a helmet is put some of those pads in it, um, a good chin strap if it didn't already have one. Um, but, uh, you know, because you're going to pay a few hundred bucks for a good ops core, Team Windy or something like that, even a, a you know, polymer bump helmet. And I yeah. think, like, when you start talking about getting into the night vision realm, you have to understand you're you're so far past like walking into that gun store and buying that first you know Glock 19. You're that's that's kindergarten. Right. You were talking collegiate level gear sourcing. Like we're 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 you know we're a Division One you know um, SEC team at this point. Um, you are you got to have to sit down and have that kind of come to Jesus talk with yourself. You're like. I'm yeah. going to I'm going to spend several thousand dollars to get into this game. It, it you know, you don't there are certain thresholds that you need to hit. Um it doesn't mean you have to spend $20,000, but you're going to spend a few thousand dollars yeah. to get something. If you go into this with the idea like, "Hey, I, 
I'm trying to do this the cheapest way I can, you're going to be disappointed. Oh, yeah. There. You're going to end up with stuff that you wish you didn't have. You're like, oh, night vision is night vision. Yeah, it is. But if, if it doesn't work well and, and it doesn't fit well and the accessories are, are cheap you know, junk. Or I mean, it's like buying, systems. and not to disparage companies, but here we go. Uh, hmm. It's like buying an Anderson AR-15 versus, say, like a, a Noveski. Yeah. Like there's a, their AR-15s, but there's a giant, giant difference between that. Yeah. And guys who are just like, oh, I want the cheapest AR, you can do that, but don't think that that is going to give you the same performance, um, you know, um, as something, as something yeah, for, that, is, the, that is yeah. designed yeah. and built for war. There is a happy medium, there is. and your budget will help you decide that. Right. But if you go into it with the idea that, hey, I want to do this on as you know, shoestring of a budget as I can, you're going to probably be disappointed in yeah. how you end up. Yeah. Um, it, just, it just is what it is. You know, and I'm not saying, you know, not going to get on the don't be poor train or whatever, but it's just like, understand that it's, it's like going out and buying a car. Yeah. You're going to have to spend some money, even if you don't get the most, the, the, if you know, if you don't get your dream car. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I want to bounce back to something you said, then I'm going to bounce back to something you just okay. said. Um, you listed kind of one of your sort of four must haves in terms of a, rounding out the, the platform as a, as a, as a laser. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> What about coming at it from the standpoint of can I? Are we at the point now with with mounts and optics that is there a version where you can forego a laser for a tall mount and focus on passive aim? Well, so uh, that's a good question. So at Greenline we have a class called NVG Rifleman or Night Vision Rifleman, and there's a lot of passive aiming going on in that class uh, out to some pretty extended distances. But here's the thing: to to be able to passive aim. Um, at these distances, like all the planets got to be in alignment, the moon's got to be a certain loom. You have to be able you, to see the yeah, target. You are very much dependent on Identify. the environmentals. Yeah. And so I, I would I would venture to say you can't always bank on, you know, the weather always being there for you to, to have those perfect optimal lighting conditions to be able to, to shoot passively. It can be so dark that you can't even shoot 15 yards passively in certain environments. So... Yeah, you, you can do yes, it. Yes, but we don't consider it a substitute, or we don't no. consider it a replacement. Okay. The, it's a spare tire. We still consider not, the laser the primary. Yeah. Um, and I've even taught guys to use the laser and the illuminator to PID mm -hmm. and still feel free to use, the, use your aim point to make that precise shot right. if you have to. All right. So there, there are ways to work it together. The passive aiming through the tube shooting, whatever you want to call it, has, has really you know, become a thing because of, you know, the, the um, proliferation, the proliferation night of, well, and the, the taller mounts yep. and stuff like that. And which, we love, we're not, we, know, we love I mean, we, we use all of those. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's not just for night vision. That's one of the things guys like, well, I don't need that stuff because I don't have night vision or I don't want to shoot passive. I'm like, but do you, do you want to keep your head up and your eyes up and bring the gun to your eyes like you were taught? Yeah. And not have to do this at the last second because that's what it does for you. So even running a gun during the daytime, tall mounts are like, in my opinion, king. Um, you know, we pretty much t shot tall mounts exclusively since oh about 2017. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I think I have I have two guns that don't have tall mounts, and only one of those has has like a red dot. The other one has an LPVO. And I think I piggyback. Yeah, I piggyback at 12 o'clock. So you do on have that. a tall. So I do yeah, sort do of have a tall. tall red dot. Yeah. But yeah, tall mounts are, they're here. They're, you know, anybody who's like, oh, they're, they're too tall. It's like, you don't shoot much, do you? Yeah. Or they lay in the prone or they shoot off a bench or yeah. something like that. But if you do Fuds. any of the tactical style shooting, tactical and defensive style shooting, it lends itself to exactly how we teach people to shoot, which is keep your head up, keep your eyes up, bring the gun to your eyes, don't bring your face down to the gun. Um, and we, over the years, always taught that and said that, and then we use these lower one-third co-witness optics mounts, and then we had to get a cheek weld. So we would do all of that and still have to do this to see. And that's what the taller mount does. I, I keep my face up, and I just bring the gun up into my line of sight and pull the trigger. It's, uh, you know pretty intuitive and the first time I 
shouldered. It was when pretty much the only thing on the market was the, the Knights Armament, you know, skyscraper, skyscraper mount. Mm -hmm. I was like, what's the big deal with this? And the first time I threw that thing up to my shoulder, I was like, I get it. Yeah. I get it. And then I realized, you know what, this is really allows, I, I didn't realize that I was doing what I just said before about like t teaching people. I was taught all those same words and I'm saying all those same words and then having to still get my face down and get a cheek bulb. Yeah. And I never realized it until I didn't have to do it that one time. I was like, holy crap. So I convinced ADM to come out with their version of it. And, and then, you know, we're close friends with the Unity Tactical guys and, and now a lot of reptilians. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, I mean, there's, yeah. again, yeah. just yeah. like dual tube housings, right? Now there's all kinds of options. Mm -hmm. When yeah. it comes to, to taller yeah. optic mounts. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. it, it just works. It's a good time to be alive if you're wanting to buy a tall mount. You've got a lot of choices. Yeah. yeah. So to go back to something that, that you said right before I, I bounced to Sam, talking about, again, you know, don't get wrapped up in chasing your tail and don't let, you know, great be the enemy of, of good enough and, and things like that. Um, and you said something specifically that I wanted to address, which is, you know, jumping on the don't be poor train and you know that's something that gets tossed around in forums and facebook groups and, mm -hmm. and all, a lot of the a lot and of the it's open fun groups. sometimes well, you know I right mean, and right and it, I, I understand it is it is largely meant tongue-in-cheek i think most of the yeah. times it comes and, up and to be honest with you when we talk about it a lot of times it's it's more of a mindset right then it's like it doesn't mean you have to have the greatest gear and you have to sacrifice your life and go into debt that you that, that that's wrong right you know but you know, if you can cut out stupid crap that you do in your life and invest in quality stuff. Like drugs. Yeah. Um, then, you know, that's, that's kind of what we're talking about. It's like, hey, you want this stuff, you can, you can do this. You can have this stuff. You know, quit wasting money on yeah. dumb things. Sacrifice some things or work hard for it and stuff like that. It's, you know, it is what it is. It's all relevant. Well, so, so on that relative. note, do you guys have tips on how do i say this how do i shop smart <clears throat> we well, shop at s smart that's right first of hail all. to the king baby um mm -hmm. there's and I, I say this in classes you you can when it comes to like buying used gear you can save a whole lot of money you can hit a freaking home run man but if you're not an informed consumer you can strike out big time so um being an informed consumer can, can save you a lot of money. And, and it's gonna take you, you know, you're gonna have to go look up the information. You're gonna have to watch videos on YouTube and, and other places, you're gonna have to do some reading. Um, and it's you in a- You need to do some research into the people that you're getting that information from. Oh yeah. yeah. Also. The, yeah. You know, it, I mean- The internet is as full of great information as it is just toxic, cancerous bullshit. Um, from from dudes who like their experience with night vision is they just went through their first airsoft tournament and now they're opening a night vision company and they're recommending certain products based on this one experience they had like three weeks ago and I'm not even exaggerating like that's that's in 2024 every time I turn around it's like oh another guy is opening a night vision company mm -hmm. okay um, so again buyer beware so again you can go read on the internet you can do your research and everything like that the other thing is go to formal like classes go to night vision classes uh it's kind of the it's kind of the life hack it's the shortcut between you know point a and b um in two nights maybe three nights of training you you'll learn what you're looking for and it would probably take you a month or two researching on on yeah. the internet and you're going to learn from subject matter experts not from dudes who just got done with their first airsoft tournament. Well, who and and all the same stuff, stuff, you know, if, if you're into going to rifle classes or pistol classes also applies. You're gonna be there with a group of guys who have probably already walked that path. They've got the gear, they've made the poor choices, and they can, you know, you don't even have to listen to what we say. You could ask the, the other guys in the class, yeah. like, hey, how do you like that? Why did you buy that? And they'd be like, yeah, I almost, I bought this before, oh shoot, that, that might have been, been what you were thinking about getting, you know. If, um, if you call a company, and I'm not saying you shouldn't call a company, because go definitely go shop around, but understand, like, you know, they're trying to sell you a product. Right. 
classes are not necessarily trying to sell you a program. They're just trying to give you the information. And then you, based on that information, you formulate your plan of attack when it comes to going and buying the product. So um, I'm not saying don't go talk to companies and, and, and call them up and ask them stuff, because you should do that. But don't just call up one and be convinced mm -hmm. right off the bat that this is the next best thing since sliced bread. Like, go, you know, yeah. do your research, I mean, man. You were just talking to the salesman. Of course you. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, and you know we we have you know rental gear that guys in in class can can rent and take the class while they're learning and stuff like that and getting their questions answered, and and so do some of our our friends and peers. So it's not just us that, that do that. And there there's you know some other guys that are out there that are are definitely willing to answer questions. One of the things that is a little bit different about our class is we are very information heavy, um, to the point where we've been like chided. I wouldn't say criticized, but chided for like how much we spend in a classroom type environment talking about it. But we, we only spend time in the classroom when the students are asking questions. Right. It's like we're here Sometimes to Sometimes they never questions. shut up. Yeah. They yeah. never stop asking questions. So that's, and that's, that's how okay. we know people are interested in this. Yeah. You know. Well, I'm glad you brought up the, the, the rental gear stuff. I, that is a little tougher to find with night vision. You know, I, I get if I had a nickel for every time somebody came up to me and said, well, 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 I need to buy my first handgun or I want to buy my first handgun, what do I buy? You know, my answer is that if you have a, a, a range near you that has rental guns, rent every single gun yeah. that they have, you know, and, and try it. Um, and like you said, you, you'll figure out what you're looking for. Um, maybe, 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 hopefully. Um, you know, in combination with research and, and talking to people and vetting your information sources. It's, unfortunately, there's not a lot of, you know, there's, there's no, you know, gun stores don't usually have night vision rental counters, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So for you guys to, to offer that, that's good. And I know that you guys aren't the only ones that, that have that available, but um, you know, I would say that for anybody that has the opportunity to, to kind of do like a try before you buy. Um, yeah, and our gear is not the stuff that you would necessarily purchase. Yeah. Some of it's been around for a while, but it gives you the opportunity to train with yep. night vision, with goggles and lasers and, 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 and all that stuff. And ask the questions, and you know you may the, the more modern gear may be what the other students have. You know our stuff is it's pretty up to date, but it's not the latest. We have a we have a pretty good mix of like kind of older you know green foss stuff, and, and and I think it's good to have that stuff so guys can go well you know maybe I don't need to spend twelve thousand dollars. This to me is is good enough. And it meets yeah. my budget, and I don't have to, you know, take out a freaking I don't need home equity loan to freaking loss. right, especially buy this if stuff. it's not in your budget. Yeah, because you know, we'll never, you know, we might tell guys, hey, you know, maybe you should wait a little bit longer and save a little bit more, but don't, you know, don't go into debt thinking you have to have that super expensive thing. And, and like I said, guys will run an older set of, you know, green green tubes. It's like, well, this is pretty fine you know they'll look through the others like oh these are awesome but i ran the whole course with you know same same crap that and here here's the other thing you say you do have a um, a lower performance set of nods you know it's it's old in the teeth if you will a really good laser-based illuminator will kick the performance of that up to probably the same level as super high performance stuff so yeah maybe maybe save a little bit buying a um you know, an older or, or a less capable, you know, thin film green foss system and put the money you saved into a really good laser illuminator, like a Maul or an Ninjal or, or Radex or something like that, if you can, if you can stomach that. And, and that's a pretty damn effective package mm -hmm. right yeah. there. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's, a, a, that's what I was hoping to get to, where it is, is what, what can you, I don't want to say trade off, but what can you trade off? Yeah. You know, well, as soon as you, get, as get soon as you, you introduce your own high-powered infrared energy yeah. into the equation, you know, those low specs matter so much less. Right. Yes. Well, and what's perceived as low. And like I said earlier, what we call low now is was a unicorn tube once upon a time. Right. Not so, that long ago. You know, yeah, not all that long ago, yeah. especially um, for some of this stuff. Or what we consider normal right now, you know, a few years ago was like very rare. Yeah. So don't worry about it. You don't have the latest and greatest if you know if you're not in the latest and greatest budget. Yeah. Um, you know arena. Well, I know uh, 
you said that sometimes you guys wind up uh, with students that don't shut up, but the students that you've had here have been very quiet and very <laughs> patient. So I, I would like to give the guys that are that are hanging out here a chance to ask some questions uh, if they've got them. So, uh, yeah. gentlemen, I, I think we bored them to death. Yeah, we we, we might have burned their. I need one of those bit. guys to toss me one of those lighters behind behind you on that. The yeah, I thing, actually because my my cigar went. Luke, out. my there lightsaber. You go. Thank you. My lightsaber. I'll I'll bum that off you when you're yeah. done. Yeah, um, I, like I said, you guys have been troopers hanging out while we kind of jaw jack over here for a while. But uh, let's let's hear from you guys. Uh, you know, what questions do you have? What did we not touch on that that you'd like some more information about? I mean, my first set of duels were, I, th I think they were like Omni 4 tubes. And um, they were, you know, looking back on it, they were not that amazing. But at the time, dude, I killed a lot of pigs, shot a lot of targets, you know, did a lot of like driving. And I, I, I got work done with them. So, um, yeah, if the price is right, and oh, by the way, if you have that really good laser-based illuminator to kind of offset the disparity in performance, then I don't, I don't see, like if you just can't stomach like brand new, you know, unfilmed stuff, I don't see an issue with that. Um, yeah, they might not have a warranty. Um, manufacturer's defects are rare. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, you're rolling the dice a little bit, but statistically speaking, you're probably gonna be okay. Um, on who you're getting them from. Yeah. Yeah. As much as you can, you know, sometimes, you know, guys, you know, a dealer or something like that will get a deal on some stuff and, you know, he doesn't even really know exactly the history of it. But if they're upfront and honest and they tell you, hey, this is everything I know about it and you believe them, um, you know, do the research and see, oh, you know, is it a trustworthy source to begin with? Um, you know, you know, they get lots of vouchers in <laughs> from people. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, older older stuff is is still good, and it's, you know, like like you said, especially if it if it fits in the budget. <laughs> if you think it gives you that good return on investment, then yeah, it was worth it. Like if you if you're like, hey, these things are fucking all, awesome. you know, they work for you, then then they work for you. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you're getting the results you're looking for, I can't argue with results. I guess at the end of the night, especially if you're like a new buyer, and and you're not even sure how much you're gonna use them yet. And if you find that like, man, I use these all the time, I love them, I'm gonna start saving for a better pair. Yeah, and they, or and they may you might be like, I can't remember the drug. last time I got these things out of my safe, you know, after three years of owning them, you might end up selling them or, yeah. or you know, and plenty of guys are like, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't ever have time to use them anymore. Mm -hmm. I have a family emergency, my nods, you know, I'll get another pair later, yep. you know, or whatever, you know, there's all kinds of variables. So yeah, um, you know, we used to joke around a lot about it. We're, we've softened a little bit it, it, yeah, as far as like the, the whole don't be poor crap. I think it's kind of played itself out. Here's the but thing to remember. Be smart. You've got night vision. You can see in the dark. Maybe you can't see in the dark as well as somebody with like as super well high performance, <laughs> but you can see in the dark. Like that makes you better than just about everybody. One hundred percent. Yeah. So, what else you guys got? Sure. Um, if someone wants to walk into a room that's white lit with night vision, without looking at the source, are photons photons, or does white light hurt, or is it white lit? Define what what is white like light. Like we're in a room we're in a, okay. right now with, with light bulbs. Does those hurt night vision, or are photons just photons? Well, regardless. So yes and no. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, modern Gen 3 night vision, for the most part, is auto-gated. Auto-gating is a self-protection feature that, that um, it, it protects the tube against you know, high light exposure and everything like that. So lighting like this, no, not going to hurt night vision. I could probably wear it in here for a couple hours and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, that said, how does night vision get damaged? Light exposure. So, you know... Technically, yes, you are you are 
you're not damaging the tube per se, but you may be reducing the tube's life. Um, yeah, through, you're causing through it to work harder. Yes, you're causing it to work harder. Um, so, uh, does that answer your question? But yeah, photons are photons. Yeah. Um, doesn't matter if they're infrared photons or they're white light, you know, uh, visible spectrum photons, they're, they're photons. Um, obviously, night vision is optimized to see and amplify near infrared um, light versus visible stuff, but it's still, it can technically can all damage it. If, and and here, here's the adage that we use in class, yeah. intensity, proximity, duration. Um, if the intensity is really high, but the proximity and duration is really low, I'm not going to do it. If the intensity is really high and the proximity is really close, you know, you get two out of the three, yeah, it could damage it. Um, but if, if the intensity is really low and the proximity is really low, you, you know, so the, the, the best bet is if you don't have to expose it to light, if you don't have to look at that bright light source, then don't. It's not like the movies where white light, yeah. you're blind. No. no. Um, no. Not uh, anymore. You know, use it. Don't abuse it. Yeah. Like, auto-gating is not a ticket to, you know, flick the lights on and run around your house with the lights you know, on. Shine your shirt fire yeah. in your face. Yeah, don't, that would be dumb. But yeah. Don't do that. But don't be afraid to get out and use it. And, like, you know, if somebody flicks the lights on, it's like, oh, okay, hey, well, let me just reach up and flip them yeah. up and turn them off. No but, big deal. You know, it's like the tires on your car or truck. If you drive normal and, you, you know... Rotate them. Rotate them and take good care of them. They're going to last a lot longer. You know, if you're doing burnouts and drifting and stuff like that, you're going to wear them out sooner. You know, they're... Same, you're same. going in and out of a lot of highlight environments and stuff like that, you're putting a lot of strain and stress on, on, uh, on the tubes, and, you know, you may shorten the life. But, you know, I only know of a few people that have ever used their nods so much that they actually burn them out. Anything else? One more. So now you've you know figured out the tubes that are appropriate for you in your situation. How do you care for them? Well, kind yeah. of the, the cool thing is you don't really have to do much. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, you know, inspect the unit for wear and tear and cracks and breakages and stuff like that. Take the battery out when you're not using it. Um, clean the lenses periodically with you know some good quality lens cleaner. But outside of that, there ain't much you got to do. Yeah. Um, you know, some guys like to get like a Pelican case or something like that to, you know, like a rigid case to, to store them in so they don't get crushed or drop. You know, if you drop it, it's in a, you know, padded, you know, case like that. The one thing I'd be, um, I warn people about is be careful that you don't trap a bunch of humidity inside of it because they're designed to be waterproof, but they'll also keep it inside there. So make sure everything's dry or throw some silica packs or something in there with it. Or, or whatnot. Um, you go buy a couple of packs of beef jerky, eat the beef yeah, jerky, eat the beef the jerky, put packs. the little things in there. Yeah. Or buy some shoes and take a little out of your sneakers. I, I'd rather my nods smell like beef jerky than yeah, shoes, than, but you yeah. do you. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but, you know, that's one thing. You just don't use any harsh chemicals. If you treat it like you would a nice rifle scope or something like that, you know, you're fine. They're, they're designed, I, I've been saying this for years, these things are made to be issued out to 19 year old infantrymen. And taken to war. And these are dudes that didn't even spend their own money on them. So you think they take good care of it? No. In, awesome. Uh, in, in 2024, what's like a good, better, best budget for a guy who's coming in, who wants to do it right, who's going to do the sure. research, who wants to buy, you know, the poor thing for staying? Is it like 2500 5000 7500 Like, where do you guys see a good, better, best? I would say good, good probably about be a, 45 to 5500 bucks. Good to be a PBS 14 with a bump helmet amount and a decent laser. Yeah, yeah about, about 45, 45 to 5500 bucks. 5, and you can, you know, you can fudge those numbers a little bit. If you go use, you get a good deal. So maybe, maybe just because you go use, you come in at 35 to 4500 bucks, somewhere in there. Um, but what I'm saying, the, the 45 to 5500 that's brand new retail pricing. Um, the better would be, you know, about eight to ten thousand um, dollars. You're you're starting to step into. You're definitely in the dual tube realm. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you're getting white foss. Um, you're probably not gonna get unfilmed uh, systems at, at that. Twelve. Yeah. 
but you you know you're probably you know uh, a good mount a good helmet it could be ballistic depending on which one you buy uh, and, a, and a decent laser and then 12 to we'll call it sixteen thousand dollars then you're hitting you're you're in unfilmed territory you're in uh what i would consider like third gen um laser mm -hmm. territory mall radex ingel um wilcox mounts probably an ops core or, or or a team wendy you know american-made ballistic helmet uh you you you're willing to spend that much money you're going to get something that's you know it, Probably equivalent to what most soft guys are, are issued and running yeah. around with. And then, so. you know, ultimate best, you're looking at I don't know how much panos are yeah. these days. Panos are about $42,000 these days. So. so, And if you're spending that kind of money, you're also buying the best lasers out there. You're going to be putting them all or yeah. a RAID or an NGEL and stuff like that on there. So you're, you know, you're up there. And like I said, guys are buying it. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And guys buy Porsches. If you... If you <clears throat> If you've got the cash on hand, dude, buy it with your credit card and bank those reward points and use those reward points pay the to credit card off. buy the accessories and the and the add-ons and the accoutrements and the nice to haves um, with your reward points. So if you've got sixteen, would you rather someone spend twelve and four thousand on training or the yes. whole thing? like what's the yes. ratio there? Yeah, training definitely factor in training training training's will, not as expensive yeah and, um, yeah but it's but it's key it's and, really and i'll important. touch on the training stuff a little bit you sure you're qualified don no but i'm gonna do it anyway <laughs> um, we'll one it. of the things about night vision <clears throat> training is i'm not saying this is a must but it, it's a really really you should be already an experienced student of the gun in the daytime um I've seen a trend over the past few years of guys wanting to get into night vision before they're even into shooting, right? And uh, I'm not saying it's... It's, it's I mean, a disaster. It you doesn't usually work disaster. out for guys because it's like they're not even comfortable in the daytime shooting as, as they think they are. Um, when you take a night fighter course from, from us or, or anybody, it's like you we don't we're not there to teach you how to shoot the gun and run the gun. If you're not used to that already, um, you're going to be way behind. And what you're not going to be doing is you're not going to be learning the stuff that I'm trying to teach you about night vision, because you, you've never been a student on a firing line in a class before, and now you're doing it for the first time at night. So you take your time. If you're like, oh, I want to get into, I want to do this, this, and this, and that. You know, well. Night vision is not really a starting point. It's it's more of a destination. Yeah, you right. got to play pee wee football before you play Division One college yeah. ball. You not, know what I'm saying? Not saying you know you have to take years and years and years to get there, but uh, you know, night fighter shouldn't be the first formal training course that you've you've been to. You know, or and the there are other there are other you know things like that. Same as like a shoot house course shouldn't be the first formal firearms you know training course that you've ever taken even though some people do that. Um, you know, just, it's, it's a progression. Um, we, can, we can tell in about 10 seconds on the range, you know, after guys put their gear on and step up to the line, who's ready and who is gonna struggle yeah. in about 10 seconds before the shooting even starts. So it's just how they hold their gun. It's like, okay, I'm gonna be watching you, buddy. Well, and it's not just that. Is To me, I feel like you've done yourself a disservice because you're gonna be struggling just to learn the stuff I'm trying to teach you. You're not gonna get it. Um, you know, we're worried about you, you know, not saying there's, you know, very rarely we have people that are unsafe, but the sad thing is, is they're like, always in my classes. Yeah, they're always yeah. Um, but but the sad thing is, like you weren't ready for this because you're like a fish out of water, um, kind of thing. So definitely, if you're thinking about doing this and you're not already in the shooting community, taking classes and doing stuff like, get in, get that AR. Don't worry about the laser, all that stuff. You know, get a good light on it, good sling, a good optic, and take a class. Get out there, and and you're gonna run into guys that have the stuff that you're thinking. You're gonna meet those guys in, in, in daytime classes that are into night vision and, and make friends with those guys, learn from them, you know, get advice. Um, it's a fun community to be in. Yeah, I, if, 
if I had, well, I mean, I got into training just about as soon as I could, but man, I wish, looking back, I'm like, man, I wish that somebody had, you know, mentored me or directed me and like, don't buy that stupid piece of, you know, fill in the blank, you know, inanimate object that goes on a gun. So um, going to classes can end up saving you a lot of money by mm -hmm. making you not spend stuff on, on fluff gear and, and zero value added, you know, upgrades. Well, even a night fighter, we get dudes um, ask like, oh, should I buy this to bring the class, whatever. I'm like, if you have the minimum stuff that we say, or if you're renting our gear and you have, you know, everything else, <clears throat> show up and learn. Then go spend your money. You know, start training, have it, you know what you need, and yep. then get into it. Because you'll learn what works for you, what doesn't work for you. You'll learn from the other guys in the class. Like, oh yeah, don't buy that. You know, this I had all kinds of trouble with that. It's it's a waste. It's a gimmick. Or yeah, I liked it. You know, or don't throw money into problem you don't. <clears throat> right. You know, it's it's not an emergency. You don't. Ha it's not a race. Alibis? Anybody? What other applications are there for night vision besides shooting? Oh, that's Man, a good one. I like that. We and and when we worked at TMVC, I would I would come in contact with people that, man, they were using night vision for all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah, astronomers. Um, yeah, dude, I had a guy call me up and say he wanted to buy night vision to look for Sasquatch. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, I was you trying know to what? go on. I was trying to go with him on. Uh, that you like, know we what? need to sponsor these guys do it man if you can find sasquatch with with night vision you take a selfie that's badass I, I you know but yeah uh, astronomers boaters um hikers uh a lot of dudes are into like you know uh, backcountry backpacking and they like to do it at night the cool thing about going out in the woods with night vision at night is you will see all kinds of wildlife and, and critters that you would never see during the day yep. um mm -hmm. so if you if, obviously hunting, but if you just want to like view nature, you know, run around on that. side by sides and yeah, four wheelers, and, ATV and stuff. in, UTV in That's driving cool. is fucking awesome. Um, yeah. you know, shooting is don't get me wrong, shooting is awesome. Yeah, but when you can fly down a road at seventy miles an hour, completely blacked out. Um, I used to do it on my hunt lease, and I, you know, the, the the fishing game guy would be like parked on the side of the road, and I'd fly past him in my truck at like 70 miles an hour on this dirt road, completely blacked out, like the headless fucking horseman coming out of the night, and it would <laughs> freak them out. It was awesome, and they try to chase me, and I just make a turn, and they would go past me, and then I'd end up behind them, and I'd turn my lights on, and they'd be like, uh, and they'd, I'd turn my lights off, and then back off, and you know, play these cat and mouse games with the fishing game guys. Because, you know, they're fish cops. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. Um, and then talk to them because you're not doing anything illegal. So. Right. Yeah. It's true. That's what's funny. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Are you on, you know? Yeah, you said that you mentioned night hiking where I am in, in like in southern Arizona. Yeah. Like, that's huge. Yeah. You know, for the wildlife, there's so many trails out there and there's so many mountain ranges to hike. And, and, I and know, it's hot there during the daytime. It's right, yeah. Well, that's the other thing is, right, especially, you know, over the summer, nobody wants to go out when it's 110, but when it's a balmy 92 at, you know, midnight. You, um, you're yeah. mewling drugs across the border, aren't you? <laughs> How do you think I got How you got to pay for night vision? Yeah, yeah. 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 got to do what has got to do. Don't hate the player, hate the game. So, yeah, there's all kind. Like, if you can think of it, and the sun is down, you could probably do it. I've, I have mowed my lawn with night vision just to see if I could do it. Um, I have- I've, His neighbors weren't too happy. That was only like nine o'clock at night, but I have gone into my kitchen and turned all the lights off and tried to like cook an omelet. And anything you do under night vision is a practice. So uh, <laughs> embrace it, like go do quirky weird shit. Like, yeah, your wife's gonna be like, what the fuck are you doing? You're such a weirdo. It's like, yeah, but do you want this omelet or not kind of thing. Um, anyway. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, thank you guys so yeah, much. Man. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I know it's super late for all of us and, you know, it's been a long day. Thank you guys, just students that, that, that you all that stuck around to ask questions. Um, really appreciate that. And i um, looking forward to day two. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Let's have a drink.